Well, welcome to Overbury Farms, and it's the 29th of September. It's been a particularly balmy Indian summer for the last few weeks, which has been great for our cover crops. And I just want to give you a bit of a, an overview on a trial with different varieties and different mixtures in that we've got going on here. There's 11 different blends or, um, or straight single varieties, all about half a hectare each. The plan is to take these to a sort of a dry matter yield um, about the time of the first frost, depending on when that is, and we'll get these sort of measured up with a sort of a meter square um, sort of tonnage of dry matter that's been grown on this field. This is a long acre since these crops were planted on the 7th of August, so they've had about eight weeks. So the first one off is white mustard. This is planted at 20 kilos per hectare, and as you can see, that's kind of romped away really. Done a fantastic job. Great ground coverage, um, and uh, that's actually providing quite a lot of natural habitat for insects and late sort of uh, pollen supply um, for things like bees and and such like that are after a bit of late season pollen. So that's actually that's actually quite good as well. Next up, we've got some forage rye, uh, which has covered the ground quite well. A little bit of spring barley, sort of volunteers just mixed in there as well, <coughs> and um, the odd yellow flower, that's a bit of charlock, sort of brassica weed that we've got in the field as well. Um, next up we've got Hanukkah, which is a straight vetch. Um, so vetch is a, a legume, so that's going to be producing a lot of nitrogen, very, very dense cover. Um, some wheat volunteers in there as well, but this is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, was always dubious about vetch because of the price of the seed, um, but actually if that's put in early, uh, that's got the potential to yield quite a lot of nitrogen. Um, next year's crop that's due to go into this field is going to be spring barley. So that would work quite well. This is the King's uh, soil structure mix. Um, and this is sort of fodder radish and phacelia. Um, and uh, looks like there's some, some turnips and bits and pieces in there as well. That's not come quite as well. It might be a bit sort of slightly less fertile bit of the field there. Um, nevertheless, where it's had a bit more nitrogen on the overlap here, that's obviously done quite a lot, quite a lot more growing really. Um, this next bit here, which is again a quite interesting one, it's a mixture of rye and vetch. So the vetch for nitrogen fixation, the rye for Sort of overall ground coverage and um, and mopping up of kind of residual nitrogen that's been left from the preceding crop so if we're th thinking about soil uh, well sort of moisture sorry if we're talking about water quality and reducing leaching of nitrates and phosphates from agricultural land then something like that over the winter would do a, a fantastic job this is a really interesting one this is black oat and vetch um, so again, obviously there's a few volunteers in here as well, but there's a sprinkling of vetches in here. Lots and lots of black oaks. These have grown very, very quickly. Very, very rapid development and rapid growth. So <clears throat> that's quite uh, that's quite a handy looking mix. <clears throat> um, and then where do we go next? Job to see. It's uh, it's outgrowing all of my little pegs which are in here. So here we've got soil vitality mix. So there's lots of fodder radish in here, lots of vetch. Um, again, vetch that you can just see down into there. There's the fodder radish. And again, some of that's coming up into flower now, which is great. A bit of phacelia, um, just sort of tucked away, just down in there as well. So a nice little, a nice little blend as well. And that's actually got up and, and got away. Um, for the purposes of the trial, this field did have some slug pellets and we've also got some, some nitrogen trials going on in here as well just to see whether a little bit of nitrogen um, can help really maximise the amount of dry matter that we can generate from the, the input of the seeds basically. Here we have radishes and vetch and again that's, that's growing really quite nicely. More vetch in there for nitrogen fixation, radish in there for compaction removal and soil conditioning, soil structure. Um, actually, that looks like it's growing an awful lot of cover as well. Lots of uh, lots of flowering bits and pieces. 
so that's quite uh, that's quite good <clears throat> and then what have we got going on in here well whatever it is it's up to my knees um, which has got to be a good sign um, hmm. right well not quite sure what that one is I think it might be Selena oil radish but I'm not quite sure about that I think it probably is and then up here which is number nine we've got defender oil radish as well so <clears throat> which is this bit just here that's right so there we got that's the cellar silatina oil radish and this is the defender oil radish in here so this is growing fantastic crop um, club root resistant so it's suited for a, a sort of um, a rotation where we've got legumes in that rotation and uh, this bit just on the headland here <coughs> We have some stubble turnips just on the headland to see what um, what they can sort of generate. So really interesting, really interesting trials. We'll see how they sort of develop here are the stubble turnips. Um, <clears throat> planted 16 kilos a hectare, so quite a thick dose of seeds, and uh, that's sort of noted really. Maybe. A bit too thick in hindsight because they're not actually being able to develop to each individual sort of full potential being kind of crowded out by its neighbour but some reasonable coverage but certainly not the best um, so that's where we are uh, we'll probably have a look at these in a little while uh, another month or so just to see how much more they've grown and uh, tune in and come and see how they develop.